This is a chimp. This is a human. Humans did not evolve from chimps. Chimps did not evolve from humans. These two sister species, they evolved from a common ancestor about six or seven million years ago. I went to a conference called The Fundamentals of Life in the Universe, and this was the symbol they had to represent the conference. And I saw this, and because I winced. What is wrong with this? It's simple, but what, what's wrong with it? If you look, Google this image, you will see many, many versions of it. And one of the things that's wrong with it is they're always men, and they're always marching to the right. Why can't they march to the left? Why can't they march up, or why can't they march down? And there are other misleading things about evolution. For example, here's a biology teacher talking to a child. And the biology teacher is posing the question, if people evolve from monkeys, then why are there still monkeys? You will see this question on the internet. Well, just think of it over here in the history class. An analogous thinking teacher says, if Americans came from English pilgrims, then why are there still Englishmen? And this is a cartoon from the, from the Washington Post and during the No Child Left Behind movement of George Bush. And here's No Child Left Unscathed by such ridiculous ideas. But why are they ridiculous? Well, 19, 1859, Darwin came out with The Origin of Species. And the main idea was that humans evolved from ape-like ancestors. And Victorian women of all kinds, when they heard this, they said, let us hope it is not true, but if it is, let us pray it does not become widely known. And so I'm here to help it, make, help it be made widely known. So here's a phylogenetic tree. We have, this is millions of years, time on the vertical axis. Now is labeled humans on the right. And uh, genetic distance between these different species is the horizontal axis. Our ancestors are along that diagonal line, and our cousins are alive today on the horizontal line, and that's why we can take pictures of them and, and show them here. Our closest cousins are here, and our more distant cousins are over to the left. Now, cousins are not ancestors. For example, I'm me and my father and then my paternal grandfather, and there's my uncle and there's my cousin. My ancestor is a fa my father, my another ancestor is my paternal grandfather, my cousin is over here, my cousin. <laughs> tautological label that I appreciate. <laughs> so you can see that ancestors are not cousins. However, let's suppose that my uncle and my cousin did not change. They didn't evolve, didn't diverge from my paternal grandfather, and that's why the line is vertical. But me and my father, we diverge to the right. So if I've changed but my cousin hasn't, then my cousin is a good proxy for an ancestor, and I could use my cousin to represent my paternal grandfather. Well, that's kind of like what we're doing with this phylogenetic tree. So here we have that tree again, and we draw this lineage of our ancestors. We don't know really what they look like. And so we draw this series, and they are modeled after our cousins. But that would only be true if there was a vertical, there was no divergence from, of chimps from our common ancestor. If chimps just evolved straight up, their genetic distance did not increase. And so if everything evolved straight up, they didn't change after we diverged from them, then those cousins would represent, they'd be very good proxies for our ancestors. And then we could say, hey, here are our ancestors, and here are our cousins, they're both the same, and they represent each other. But that's not the case. These organisms evolved diagonally. They changed over time. And so you cannot do that. But... If you say, you know what, I don't care about the changes that happened along the lineage that led to chimps or gorillas or orangutans, then you don't care, so that you put it red, and then you can do that. But, no, you can't do that. They do change, and we know they change, so that's why you have to get rid of that image. So here's Jane Goodall and a chimpanzee. Now, Jane is one of my heroines because... She was probably the first human being to recognize that individual chimpanzees have personalities. And she started to give them names. Now, this was anathema to the, to the consensus of these reductionistic scientists. And she was put down and ostracized because what are you doing giving them names? Just not being a scientist. You should give them numbers. And she knew more about the chimps, so she gave them names and what the hell. So 
But here's, let's look at Jane and her mother in the upper right, and a chimpanzee Fifi and her mother Flo in the left. Picture Jane holding her mother Margaret's hand, Margaret holding her mother's hand, Margaret's mother holding her mother's hand, etc. And you can think of this long chain of mothers. Similarly, on the left, you can think Fifi holding her mother Flo, Flo holding her mother's hand, etc. A long chain of chimpanzee and human mothers holding their mothers holding their mothers' hands. And in six or seven million years, down at the bottom, they will merge at their great, great 250,000 greats mothers. Now, you could say that great, 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 great grandmother was not a chimpanzee because we didn't evolve from chimpanzees, and it also wasn't a human. Chimpanzees did not evolve from humans. But if you're going to say we evolved from chimpanzees, it's just as logical to say chimpanzees evolved from humans, and so neither of them are correct because the common ancestor looks something like this. So here's another representation. Cousins, they're, the chimps and humans are cousins and not ancestors. The ancestor is right there in the middle. And uh, we don't know whether it looked like something like this or was something like this. This is genetic distance. It's one dimensional. We can't tell. So here we have this, but we could also switch it around, switch the pictures. And then, oh, it's, that, that's equally the same thing because it's one dimensional genetic distance. Now, people ask, haven't we evolved more than chimps over the past six million years? Don't chimps seem more like gorillas than we do? Well, we're scientists. This can be tested. And when people tested it in the very beginning, about 40 years ago, 50 years ago, they found by looking at the blood and other proteins that Homo, that's us, and Pan, those are chimps, that they've evolved from the common ancestor about the same amount. So W is equal to Z or Z. But we have these feelings that we're different. So we're going to make another plot, and they did. Homo, Homo sapiens, have evolved an awful lot in the behavior, in the phenotype. We don't look like chimps, and chimps haven't evolved that much. So that means that Y, the degree to which we've evolved, is much larger than X. Now, the problem with this is on the right is something objective and we can measure by comparing molecules. On the left, it's subjective and based on our feelings of how special we are. But this still holds for many people, and there's a fancy highfalutin way of saying this in even modern papers in which they state, it is generally accepted that the extent of phenotypic change between human and great apes is dissonant and disagrees with the rate of molecular change. But you have to measure these things. You can't just feel them. So here's genetic distance, humans and chimps, common ancestor in the middle. If our common ancestor was over there, then we could say we evolved more than chimps. But if our common ancestor was here, then chimps evolved more than humans. And uh, as I said, we can measure this. And uh, here's one way to measure it. Let's look at the large-scale rearrangements of genomes along the lineages that led to humans and to chimps. Humans are green, chimps are yellow. You can see that the pretty much the same number of dots and large-scale rearrangements happened along both lineages. Now you can look at different things. You can look at the DNA and substitutions per thousand base pairs of the DNA. Now, the, since the time of our common ancestor, which was the red dot, you can see that chimpanzees have evolved further than humans. How do you see that? Because 5.56 is larger than 5.40. So chimps have evolved a little bit more since our common ancestor than our lineage has. Another way to say that, in a more recent paper, we find that substitution rates are about 2% higher in chimpanzees and about 7% higher in the gorilla than in humans. Another couple of statements to help us get our bearings about where we came from is that chimps are more closely related to us than they are to gorillas. How do we know that? Well, look at the, the distance of those two, the length of those two red lines. That's how far chimps are related to us. How closely related are chimps to gorillas? They're the blue lines. If you add up the length of the blue, it's longer than the length of the red. Therefore, chimps are more closely related to humans than chimps are to gorillas. You can also say that chimps and humans are the same distance from gorillas. Why? Because the common ancestor is the same distance, and we've evolved the same since the common ancestor. Chimps. Pantroglodytes. They are not our ancestors. They are our cousins. They are our closest relatives on Earth. And if our closest relatives in the universe are here on Earth, and chimps 
are our closest relatives in the universe.